Hey folks, Professor Finn here, and today we're going to be looking at Chapter 9 of Ralph Clicker's Funeral Service Psychology and Counseling Textbook. Let's get the presentation up and start talking about explaining death to children. So in the last chapter, we talked about what happens at what age groups. Uh, now we're going to talk about actually explaining it to them. So, first and foremost... You respond, to, you respond when talking to young children about death by your own personal and spiritual views on the topic. You are coming at them from your life experience. And children have built-in BS detectors, so you want to be honest. So first and foremost, start by finding out what they already believe. And when I say this is a how-to, I mean this is literally a how-to of how to do this. Um, the truth is most parents are woefully undertrained for dealing with these type of situations. And you as a funeral practitioner, this might be something that you have to step into. And now what you don't do is sit there with a the child by himself uh, or their self and have a conversation. But what you do is you step into a room with the child and the parent and you show them, you know, here are ways you can talk, here are ways you can communicate. So start by finding out what they already believe. So your grandpa's gone away. So what do you think about that? And then hear what they have to say. It's good to have touching and holding to make, um, to make them feel secure and less afraid. And that's why the parents are there. Let the parents do the touching and holding and encourage them to have the conversation. But they can hold and you can talk. Okay, they can hold and you can talk. And the more you do this, the more comfortable you get. You know, say, hi, I'm Joe. I'm the funeral director. I'm so, hi, I'm Joe. I've been helping your mom and dad out. So... You, you know there's something there's something happened to your grandpa, right? So, so what do you think happened? Explain that. There are so many different ways that you can approach this. Uh, and again, it depends on the age of the person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Conversation will be difficult because you don't have all the answers. And be honest about that. Don't be afraid to, to say that you don't know something. That's the first important thing. Don't BS them. M making up a fantasy response, snowballing them, they become confused and upset later, and you're a liar, right? You, you tried to get one by. Don't do it. It's okay to feel sad and show emotions. Like, tell them that. Say, you know, explain why you're sad and reassure them it's okay to be sad and cry. It's like, why aren't you crying? Well, you know, I just met your mom and dad. I really never got to know your grandpa. But I'm sad. I mean, I see the effect it's having on your mom and dad and on the other people in your family. And I'm sad. I'm sad I never got to know your grandpa because he seems really, really cool. If they're not sad, that's okay. You know, you may feel sad. You may not feel sad. Do, do, I mean, are you, do you feel sad? Not really. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone responds differently. What you're feeling is normal. But if you ever do feel sad, that's okay too. If you never feel sad, that's okay too. Always tell the truth. Children are more resilient than adults in many cases. Use direct, simple, clear language that a child can understand. And that's good even when talking with adults. Use simple, direct, clear language, no cliches. Just talk to them. Confront the issue honestly, even though this is a hard concept for them to deal with. Do not use analogies or cliches. They went away on a trip. They're, these are confusing. They do more harm than good. They didn't go away on the trip. They died. Oh my God, how dare you tell my child that? Because they died. And now you don't have to explain why going to Disney might end with someone disappearing. Just saying, man. Do not tell them that God took the person because he was sick. They may think that God takes everyone when they get sick. And when they hear that someone uh, coughs in church or uh, starts blowing their nose, your kid may walk up to them and go, Oh, you're sick. God takes people when you're sick. You're going to die. And you know dang well that you're hearing some kids saying that to someone in church right now because kids will literally do that. Tell them illness and death do not go hand in hand, and you plan to live a long, long time. Even though you haven't told them, um, even though you've told them they aren't coming back, they may continue to answer the question, trying to get a different answer. Oh my God, I can't believe kids do that. How many times do you ask the manager at Walmart or Target or the grocery store the same dang question trying to get a different response? You're doing exactly what your four-year-old does, which is exactly the way the rest of us in the line are viewing you when you do that. Just saying, public service announcement. 
answer truthfully and honestly every time. Reassure them that nothing they did or said caused the death. Reassure them that they may get angry at the person for dying, and that's fine. Being angry is a common thing. Adults need to hear that, so why don't you think the kids need to hear that? Reassure them that everything they feel is normal, and adults feel that way too. Children should attend funerals if they want. Children should attend funerals if they want. Shielding them and preventing them from attendance at a funeral does a tremendous amount of harm. People are going to die. People are, are going to die. And it's probably important, especially as they get older, they participate in these community events so they can see the value of these community events. If the children are having fun at funerals, God forbid that the children are hanging out with their cousins, etc., and the family is coming together. This is why we have these sort of community events. Children should be encouraged to attend funerals, visit cemeteries from about age four on. Children part of public gatherings should be permitted even if younger than age four. Now, not going to tell anyone how to run their business, but there is a benefit to having a cry room somewhere in your facility. Just saying. Funerals are a community sharing, and children are part of the community. Above all else, have a plan B. Do not force a child to attend a funeral. Their participation and level of participation is their own individual decision and have a backup in case they change their mind. So, suggested involvement options. And absolutely, I've used these things during my time in practice, and I have found children to be very useful in engaging them in the process. So, first... Figure out if they're going to attend or not attend and have a sitter ready. Have them look at the caskets. Have them look at the caskets and help select which one they're going to use. If they point towards that $20,000 uh, solid stainless steel, cool. Maybe you might get that sale. <laughs> More than likely not. Um, but chances are pretty good if you have four or five caskets the family's trying to select from and they're all within the budget. Have the, have the children look at it if they're at the table or, or nearby and say, hey, which one do you think is great? Which one do you think is nice? Well, I like this one because it's the same color as, as, as grandpa's car. Or this is the same color as the, 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 the wood in grandpa's office. Cool. Great way. Great way to make them happy with their purchase. Deciding to view or not view the remains. Do you want to say goodbye to grandpa? Do you not want to say goodbye to grandpa? I mean, you're going to have to see him. Do you want to go up and see him? If you don't, you don't have to. But if you change your mind, you can always go in. Again, don't force them to do anything they don't want to do. Choose special objects to put in the casket. Anything you want to give Grandpa. Anything you want, you want to make sure that he has. Do you want to write him a little letter? Do you want to say, I love you, and put it in an envelope, and we'll put it right in his hands? Help them choose the clothes. Maybe a lapel pin. Choosing the marker and epitaph. Picking out urns. Selecting any sort of merchandise. Choose a location for the scattering of the gravesite, selecting music, what flowers look nice, what readings, participating in the service, closing the casket for the last time. That is something very, very important. So when a, when a good friend of mine passed away, uh, for a, a Mason buddy of mine, uh, I drove up from Miami because he was a very important person to me. And when it came time to close the casket... I, I kind of took over from the funeral director running the thing because they were largely uninterested and, you know, just kind of hovering, doing whatever. But they would have done what any other funeral director would have done. Oh, it's time to go. It's time to close the casket. And they would have closed the casket. You know, do you want to stay? Do you want to go? And I asked, hey, would any of you folks like to help me close your dad's casket? I'll show you how. And... People were surprised they could do that. Absolutely. Come on up. Let's do this um, and get them engaged. Now, their funeral director did bail me out because it had been years since I closed the casket. And I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, I damn near forgot to lower the bed. Absolutely forgot to lower the bed. Uh, so uh, <laughs> they ran over at the casket. And I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, crap. I, th I think I've done this like once before, right? Uh, legit, it had probably been like seven or eight years since I have closed a, closed the casket. It was, it was ridiculous. I felt so so mortified. Um, 
But that was very cathartic for the people that were involved in that. And I'm very happy for that because I gave them that. That's one more thing that, you know, when they put their dad to rest, there we go. Um, closing the casket can be very, very, very uh, moving and uh, helpful for grieving family members. Post-service. Maybe they want the lapel pin. Maybe they want, the, you know, what would you like to keep a grandpa's that's here? Uh, when will the child uh, be ready to return to school? Sometimes that's largely determined by whatever your school board's policies regarding absences and stuff like that. But they do have to go back sometime. Um, <laughs> I like this one. Do they want to see the uh, cremated remains? Um, there, there are certain lines that I draw, and I'm not sure I'd want to open the urn and show them what cremated remains look like. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying that I probably would not be suggesting something like that. And I sure as heck aren't gonna ad, uh, I'm not going to advocate open the bag and let them take a peek inside the bag. Like, that's just not going to happen. I uh, would like to see the death certificate or the obituary. Would they like to participate in a support group? Um, taking them to a support group where people are talking is a good thing, even if they just want to watch and observe. They can see that other people uh, are, are expressing uh, their emotions. Other people are having trouble, which may show them that they're not alone in this sort of a thing. Uh, and, I mean, worse comes to worse, they go there and there are other people their age that, that are talking. That, that, that's tremendously powerful. And how would they like to memorialize the person on the anniversary of their death? We all memorialize our people differently. I have a close friend of mine from church that passed away, a drummer, and I have it on my calendar so that I do not forget, ever. And what happens every time that anniversary rolls around, I break down my bottle of Tullamore Dew, I pour a shot of it, or Jameson whiskey, and I toast my friend. That is what I do on that anniversary. So I'm not saying your six-year-old needs to be doing shots of old number seven, but they can, you, you can do something with your kids to memorialize um, the, the, the person who has passed away, even if it's celebrating their birthday on their birthday. Children need explanations of things and course of events during a funeral. Families need that too, by the way. You need to explain to them what the sequence is, what the, what the events are, what's going to be happening, so it gives them an idea. Uh, death is obviously changing the world as they know it. Having this information is reassuring. Same thing for the adults. Fill them in the basics of who, what, where, and why. Teens can also use this information, and teens have a very sensitive and accurate BS detector. So give them information. Tell them who's going to be at the memorial service, where it's going to take place, when is the funeral going to happen, uh, what is going to happen there, who's going to be talking, why you're doing this, why we have funerals. We have funerals so people can grieve. We do this so that we can share our grief together. And when you say that, don't just say it like you're reading it out of a magazine. Say it because you mean it, because you do, because you know it helps. Explain, especially younger children, uh, their, their, their grandpa in a, in a half-couch casket, that the body's completely there. Uh, there, there have been instances of people say the funeral director has to raise the, the, the foot end of the casket so they can see that it's all there. Well, what's the fun part? If you bought that entry-level uh, 20 gauge, non-gasketed, you're lucky if you have any interior to show. And it's going to look cheap as heck. So, you know, that, that, that's, that could be an issue. Um, tell the adults especially. Body is cool to touch. You'll be surprised that a lot of people in their 40s or 50s suffering their first death don't know what it's going to feel like. And you need to tell them, listen, you know, your, your, your mom is going to feel cold because she is room temperature. So don't be surprised that when, they, when you touch your mom, she's cool. The body does not move, okay? You, you've gone through with a trocar. You've poked about 45 holes uh, in their upper torso. Trust me, they're not going to sit up suddenly. The body does not talk or see. The body will not come back to life. The body may have marks from injury or illness. They might have not seen them as they were declining or it's been a while since they've seen them. And the body will look and feel different than the person before death. There is an explanation in the book. Uh, that there's a script. And with any script, look at it, read it, figure out for you what works and what doesn't, and then rewrite the script so that you can say it naturally and it sounds like you're saying it. Um, structure your message carefully and use words a child can understand and do not assume a child comprehends as you do. 
the body not ha having legs with the half couch casket comes into play here. They see half of grandpa or whoever it is and what happened to the other half. You may have to show them what happened to the other half. Folks, this concludes our lecture and we will see you next video.